Last night I made a video about intent in the artwork and it kind of bothered me. A bunch of people saw it, but it really bothered me. So I deleted it and decided to make a new one. But as you can see, I just woke up and I went, I'm going to give it a shot before I have to head out for the day. So here we are. Hair, sleepy face, coffee, and smells and all. Um, I've talked about an intent before, but not intent in the whole body of work. Uh, I don't really know why. Maybe because it's such a daunting subject, and I'm not comfortable really talking art the way some people are. People have... Um, the art world has a whole language for what you're doing and the, and the purposes behind it. And it's not something that comes to my mind easily. The particular vocabulary, because I wasn't trained in speaking art. I did go to art school. I did not graduate. I was never comfortable in art school. I never fit in. Too much of a plain Jane with absolutely no confidence at all. Um, I wasn't brought up to walk in this world comfortably. I wasn't brought up to in taught how to interact with people. I was brought up in a home filled with fear and alcohol and lots of scary, scary moments. So when I went off and when I went off to the world, I thought I wanted to go to the Boston Museum School of Fine Arts. I was accepted to a bunch of other schools. Uh, 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 Pratt, a whole bunch of them, and I just, I didn't go because I knew the Boston Museum School and I liked Boston. And I went and I was very uncomfortable. I was the only one there in an Oxford shirt and jeans every day. Everybody else was wearing tutus. And it's kind of an example of how I don't, I've never really fit in. Um, as I said, I came from a family uh, where it was alcohol and anger and some violence and a lot of exclusionary tactics used in relationships. And I was just, I was brought up like a frightened little rabbit and I would get angry and lash out and go into deep, dips, dip, deep pits of depression. Um, I'm, I'm, right now, I'm teetering whether to share certain aspects of my story. Maybe I'll share, show them another time. But now that I'm out of that, I'm out of those relationships. Um, my parents are dead. I have nothing to do with um, the siblings who really were horrid. Um, two of them telling me at two different times that I should kill myself. Or no, several different times that I should kill myself because no one wants me. Um, I'm not telling you that for pity. I'm telling you that as an example of how I really don't fit in and how I believe it's driven me to do what I do. Wherever I've gone in life, I've really wanted to fit in. And before I went through therapy and, and AA and myself and, and Al-Anon and, uh, you know, started moving and going to cities where I didn't know people, I, and I really wanted to fit in. I really wanted people to like me. But I always end up in the middle of a situation where it's the family crap all over again. And people using you as a target. I mean, that's what I was brought up to be. You will be a target. We will pull you off the shelf when we want you, if we ever want you. We will tell you when you are useful. And I don't want to be in those relationships anymore. So I've worked pretty hard at becoming the person I've become, still kind of ending up in those relationships, but learning too that sometimes it's just best to walk away. For me at this point, I would rather be totally alone, which for the most, which I kind of am in a lot of ways. Um, I would rather be totally alone than be the person that's told you're not worth our time or effort right now. You will sit there with your mouth shut till we're ready to do something with you. But then, you know, you. Um, 
I do a lot of, excuse me, it is early in the morning, I do a lot of figure, figurative painting and portrait painting, but they're not portrait portraits. They're paintings of people from the inside out, their energies, feelings. And when I first started doing it, I thought it was really like ethereal. I was being above my pay grade um, and trying to capture it. But from the beginning, when I first let go of painting what I th painting what a person looked like. If you look at my website in two th the 2006 era on my website, it's a lot of what people look like, delving into what people feel like. But then all of a sudden I moved um, from my hometown on Cape Cod and I got into the practice of painting how people felt. I dropped all of the how does it look away and how does it feel to be a person and what is our connectedness what what connect what connects us um, and I do that through the colors the energies I mean through the colors and the brush strokes um, there's a lot of explosiveness underneath now the wonderful thing for me is I have now heard it over and over and over and over again from people who don't really talk art, who don't really know art, don't like art, but also from experienced painters that I look up to and all kinds of people from all over the world have written to me and said, um, I, feel, I feel your paintings. I connect with your paintings because, you know, I, I'm sorry, it's very early. <sighs> when I look at your people, I can't take my eyes away. They feel locked into the gaze of the person. When I'm painting my people, I think I'm going to talk about this again another time when I'm more awake. But when I'm painting my people, they're always looking straight out. Well, for the most part, they're looking straight out at the viewer or they're locked into something at the side. But for the most part, they're looking at the viewer and they're painted so the eyes lock with the viewer. And the, wherever the viewer is in the room, the, paint, the eyes in the painting are locked on them. Wherever you go, you should see, you should feel and see their eyes follow you. And it's a big technical thing and a puzzle thing, and it's something that makes me happy when I do it. Um, I really enjoy that. That's why I do it. But I also do it because for, for several times I was told... <coughs> Well, number one, people don't want people they don't know hanging, portraits of people they don't know hanging up in their homes, which is crap. Because it's, <laughs> throughout history, this is what people have brought home, what they've purchased and brought home. So that's crap. But number two, you're too intense. Uh, one, uh, two, two family members told me I was too, too intense to have a relationship with. I, I don't even know what that means. <laughs> I, I, anyway, my gaze is too intense. Um, I look at people, I, when I look at people, it feels like I'm looking through them. I've been told all kinds of bizarre things. I had a boss who actually had me out. I was an artist for a company and he had me out on the floor and we were looking at jobs and he's talking to me and I'm looking at him and he started doing something that family members have done like trying to play dodgeball with my gaze and I'm just looking and I'm going what, what are you doing he goes, Ooh, wherever I go you're looking at me and it was such a bizarre fucked up moment and like every a lot of stuff that my family members had said to me um besides you know die uh, um pop back in my head and it's something that's really stuck with me so the, the portraits I'm doing are kind of portraits of me, but of other people. And I think it's me, I, I'm still trying to intellectualize this, intellectualize it. I think it's me looking at people, presenting myself, but as other characters in a certain way. My portraits are allowed to look at people, try and interact with people. And a lot of the times, the same people 
who challenge me or disregard me on, on many levels or disrespectful to me are all of a sudden respectful to the portrait. Oh, I love how intense it is. Oh, I can't take my eyes off of it. And that kind of cracks me up when I see that going on, when I know that it's someone who is kind of disdainful of me, of what I do, of what I have to do to survive every day, or whatever. Who cares? They're, oh, and ah, and oh, you're, oh, this is just genius. And it's like, dude, that's also, you know, that's fucking me up there that you're looking at and you're in love with over there. So, you know. So the portfolio, the figurative and the portrait work is really me interacting with the world, me trying to build a relationship in the world, but without getting too close, I think. Because um, it's just too dangerous. It's just too dangerous. I, ha I have friends, um, but I do tend to like to be by myself. And I like to be with my people that I built. They're not mean, you know? I don't know. I'm trying to, I'm trying to be able to talk about this so I can talk about this in, in, in person. Um, in my videos, I do a lot of how to's and, you know, I talk about fear and, and keep, you know, that you never give up and that you keep trying, but it's also important to know why you're doing what you do. And I think at this point in time, it's me trying to not only build relationship in the world, cause I'm really not that desperate to have, you know, lots of pals and, and I don't want anyone in my house. I, like, I, <laughs> I'm not desperate for that, but I have to work in this world and I have to have some sort of relationship in the world, I believe. So I think that's what I'm working towards, but in my own way where it's safe and it's comfortable. And when these go out in the world, it is a very big piece of me. So when people look at my paintings and they say, I, I, I don't, I didn't want to go to this opening. My wife dragged me here. My so-and-so dragged me here. I hate art. I don't know how to talk about it, but I like your stuff. I feel connected to it. That means the world to me. They've connected to my paintings. They've connected to me. I think that's as close as I'm going to get to making any sense this morning. We're going to keep practicing on talking about the intent and the whys and not just the hows. Because you do now have to talk. No, have to. You do something and there. You do have to know how to talk about your art as an artist. All right, time to shower. Ciao.